Hey guys, today I'm back in Besiege, and I want to try making a Wankel engine. Now here's a graphic I stole from Wikipedia, and you can see that the engine has a triangular-shaped piston, for lack of a better word, and some weird ring gear rotation system. Now I also tried making this a few months ago, but that didn't really get anywhere for reasons you'll soon see. So let's get right into it. So I'm starting out here in the sandbox, and you can see some of the different designs I had. None of this is really working though, but eventually here I started with something that sorta of got some traction. So I put down a large gear, and underneath that I put a swivel joint. And on that swivel joint you can see I put down four wood logs, and on those wood logs you can see I put four gears. Now this is going to be the start of my ring gear setup, I'm not sure why it's vibrating like that, but it is kind of working so I guess it's okay. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to start with there, but to lock it all in place and create one big ring gear, what I need to do is add a few more wood pieces like I did here, and then on the end of them I put down some more gears. Now once I did this, basically the idea is that the ring gear is going to be totally locked and none of the gears can rotate individually on the outside and you can see even the large gear since it's meshed with all the gears on the outside it's totally locked in place. So if I delete that there I was hoping I'd be able to have the ring gear rotate and rotate this gear in the middle but the problem was the gear in the middle was rotating on the ring gear itself so I had to make the ring gear a separate entity and you can see here I did that just by adding some more wood pieces and then bracing into the swivel joint like this and now as I rotate it you can see the whole ring gear rotates in the middle. So once I got that, I decided to put a gear in the middle like I had before, but this time it should rotate separately, but it decided to break off, and I'm not sure why, because I reran the test and did nothing different, and it didn't break. So, that's fine. But here you can see as the ring gear rotates, the gear in the middle rotates, and it actually is kind of working. Now, here I have a slow motion kind of thing of it, and the gear doesn't mesh perfectly. It's pretty good, but it does skip a little bit, it does have some trouble sometimes, but it should be good enough to start working on the rest of the engine. And to do that, the next thing I'm doing is adding in the triangular edges to this piston. So I guess now would be a good time to talk about the two different approaches I use to try to build this engine. So the first one, which is what I'm doing here, is sort of a guide rail system, and the idea is the entire engine doesn't use any linkages or any mechanical connections. It rotates only because the pins inside rails that just happen to be at the right points, so as this thing rotates around the ring gear in the middle, it has to follow those rails. Now, the other alternative would have been a linkage system, which I thought would be a little bit harder, because it's kind of difficult to get linkages to go in the exact right position, and I also didn't know exactly the geometry I was going to need to get this to work, so I was hoping that I could just use guide rails and with a little bit of slack, everything could work fine. Now here I was finishing up, I just made sure to brace everything together, and once I got that, you can see here I can rotate everything as one big piece, and it seems to work out well. Now just to finish off this triangle, I just put down a piece on the bottom here, expanded it out, but it doesn't quite mesh properly, and in fact what I had to do was just move it back a block, and once I did that, you can see here, it works fine. It does tilt from side to side a little bit, that shouldn't be a problem at all though, because once I have it in the guide rails, they're going to stop it from doing that. Now speaking of those guide rails, I'm going to start putting that in here. And what I have here is just a long smooth surface block, and I was hoping this would mesh with the outside triangular piece of the engine and keep it in where it needs to be. Now, for some reason, you can see there's a physical disconnection between the two pieces, but they're coupled together, like they just move together. Now, even if I move them pretty far apart, they still count as being connected. And this is just getting to the point of absurdity, like that just absolutely looks ridiculous. And it honestly got even more and more ridiculous, because the idea was that I was going to use a piston to push this up into place so that they wouldn't start connected to each other, but even when I tried doing this, they were still connected to each other. So instead what I did is move them further back, and once I had this, you can see I'm able to use some pistons to push it right into place, and I also have that mirrored on the other side, and it holds them where they need to be. With that out of the way, you can see I moved it down, and I also flipped it over, and now I'm going to have the two pistons push into each other, and create a rail system in the middle. Now I'm putting a block on the outside of the triangular piece of the engine, and then putting a post on that, and you can see here as I push in the two pistons, that post is riding right in that rail, and it's going to be the basic idea of the guide rail. Now one to replace the post with a half pipe because half pipes have lower friction and you can see here that's sort of the case when I move it from side to side it glides a little bit instead of just getting caught like it was before. So it actually was moving pretty freely and things were looking up at the moment so I decided to start working on the curved section of the engine and this is actually easier than you think it would be basically I just have to move in these pieces a certain distance move them back a certain distance and rotate them a certain amount and once I do this I can create my full sort of rotated piece. Now once I had that I made sure to pin all the pieces in place and also expand out the smooth surface blocks on them so that they cover the entire area so that there's no holes for the half pipes to get caught in. So I flipped it over to the other side and then I flipped over that entire thing to the other side and once I had that there you can see here I able to start rotating this around and it's actually sort of meshing with the ring gear in the middle. It's not perfect and it's definitely going under it a little bit and I was a little worried that it wasn't going to mesh properly. So I made the outside rail and I was hoping with this it was almost certainly going to work and it was very close. It was kind of hard to get in place though and after quite a bit of moving it around I eventually got to sit down and and it sort of worked. Now the problem was I tried to rotate it a lot and things would get caught. Like here you can see this half pipe got caught in between two smooth surface blocks 
and I could have fixed that by moving in the outer wall a little bit more to the inner wall, but the problem with that is that once I do that, the ring gear in the middle actually gets caught up on the gear in the middle, and now stuff's getting caught a lot, and the problem is I just didn't have the geometry quite right, and this was sort of beginning to fail badly. Now here I actually turned to mods, and I was going to use a ring gear mod to try to just get this to work as easily as possible, and even this didn't quite get the job done. And you see it just pops right out of place, and the half pipe also popped right out of where it was supposed to be. So, the guide reel system may have worked, but at this point it just seemed like the best move was going to be to switch to the linkage system. So I loaded it back into the sandbox, and now this is something I did this week, not a few months ago. And I started messing around with the ring gear again, because it had been a while. And I also just wanted to see exactly how they meshed and how fast they could go, and it seems like I go about as fast as I want, and there's no trouble at all. So I built off of what I had here, and started working on something else. So what I wanted to do was get my linkage setup working this time, set of guide rails, and for that you can see I have a swivel joint, and on top of that I have a gear, on top of that I have another swivel joint, and on that swivel joint I have a wooden block. Now that wooden block's going to be important in a second, but you can also see I put in a ring gear and I can rotate that as well, and now what I'm doing is putting on two wooden blocks attached to the outside of the ring gear. So you can see as I rotate the ring gear, those rotate as well, and I'm attaching between that wooden wooden block I put on earlier and the outside of the ring gear using two swivel joints, I'm just bracing them together. And you can see the sort of connection I get here as they rotate, they sort of rotate both pieces. But I actually want to lock the gear in the middle. And once I do that, you can see nothing really happens. It just kind of stops in place. And the reason is that the ring gear is actually not supposed to be attached to anything at all. It's supposed to be on the bottom. And this isn't working, but you can see the beginnings of it working. The ring gear is beginning to wrap around that gear in the middle, which is what we want. It's just not doing it fully. So to fix that problem, actually all I need to do is rotate around the wooden block that I put in before. And once I did this, you can see I, it just sort of just started working. The ring gear is wrapping right around the gear in the middle, and there's really no problems at all. Now, it still wasn't totally obvious why this rotation was occurring, but it will be in about a second once I put in a reinforcement point, and I'm going to do that now. So basically all I have is a swivel joint attached to another swivel joint in the middle, and once I do this and attach it to the outside of the ring gear, this rotation just looks good, and I, at this point I understood what was happening. So that one wooden block in the middle, I'll point it out here, I'm going to freeze frame everything for you, is actually in the middle of the ring gear. And remember, this is offset from where the gear is that it's rotating around. So the idea is the ring gear has a point to rotate around, but it's offset. So it has to rotate around the small gear in the center of the ring gear in order to get around fully. So I ended up reinforcing it just a little bit more by adding in two more swivel joints to the outside. Actually, it turns out I don't need any swivel joints at all. I could just brace it directly to the ring gear. I didn't exactly realize that, so I ended up putting them in here, but you can see it working out fine. And actually, there's an even more of an improvement I can make. I don't need that long wooden rod on the outside of the ring gear at all. I could just have them all attach right to the rim of the ring gear. So once I did that here, you can see as it rotates, it rotates around and we get the motion we want. So I once again built off of what we had, and this time what I wanted to do was try a different sized ring gear and use the same sized gear. Now, the reason for this I'll show you in a second, but basically what I want to do is change the rotational period that I have, because the outside of the gear, I want to rotate so that it touches the inside gear twice during a rotation. What I had before was it was touching once, and this is actually a problem, because for the Winkle engine to work, it needs to touch twice. So here I ended up getting the setup working basically the exact same idea, it's just with a bigger gear, and this time it's actually worse than before. This one takes two rotations to make a full revolution around. The way I have it here, since I have a larger ring gear and this small gear, it takes two full revolutions for those wooden blocks on the outside to touch the center gear after they pull away from it. Whereas this one you can see only takes one revolution. If you focus on any of the one wooden blocks, it ends up touching it once again in the same spot that it took off from. So I need to do the opposite. I actually want a larger middle gear and a smaller center gear. Now I ended up finding the right ratio is having the large gear in the middle and using the large ring gear on the outside. Side. And once I did this, it was a little rough at first because I ended up pulling it in a weird way. But it ends up rotating around just right, and you can see any of the wooden blocks end up touching back on the gear twice in a rotation. So, and that's exactly what I want for this Winkle engine to work. Now, I actually improved this just a little bit more again. And basically what I did, you can see on the one side, I have a wood block that's four units long, and I have another one that's two units long. And the reason for this is that you can see the small wooden block that's two units long is pushed really far out, and the longer wooden block is pulled really far in. This will become more obvious once I actually put in the side wall so that it, like, you could see it scraping by it. But now what I want to do is add on the other legs of the triangle. So here what I'm doing is just sort of roughly measuring out how far it needs to go. And once I got that in place, I just made sure to brace it to uh, the ring gear. And here I'm using this line as the line to show you where that wall is going to be. And you can see that that first block ended up scraping by it. The second one basically scrapes by it, but the third one is kind of too far out from it. So I ended up redesigning it a little bit, and once I get that here, you can see 
all of them end up more or less scraping right by it. Some of them are a little bit further out than others, but that's actually okay. This engine doesn't need to seal properly since there's going to be no explosion or anything. I just wanted to be pretty close to get the modeling right and all that. So once I got that gear in place, basically all that was left to do is copy over the extra long spoke and then the other two small spokes that need to go into place. So I got those here and I'm putting back in that red line. So you can see as I rotate this around, all of the wooden blocks, for the most part, scrape right by that line, and that actually means that I'm going to have a perfect wall there, and I'll be able to start making the engine off of that. Now, before I do that, once again, what I want to do is add on the curved sections of the triangle. Now, I tried making that here, but I didn't make the angle steep enough, so I changed it to 3 degrees instead of 2 degrees, and once I had that here, you can see it actually looks pretty good. So I gave it a quick test here, and you can see it scrapes by that line for the most part, it actually pulls back a little bit, but it's totally normal, normal operation of the real engine, it pulls away from the wall a little bit, so I'm perfectly fine with that. So once I made that, I copied it over to all the other spokes to complete my curved triangle design, and I'm putting in that wall here that I was talking about so I no longer need to make the red line, and you can see now, everything just scrapes right by that wall, not perfectly because I ended up yanking on the engine a little bit too hard and it causes some problems, but for the most part it actually looks pretty good and I'm happy with it. So I just have to move it over to the other side as well since technically the other side is also one of those flat points. And once I do that, it ends up being a little close, so I to pull it away. And I want to make the top of the arc of the engine wall. So I put that in place here. Basically what I'm doing is just making a long chain of wooden blocks, and putting one on the outside and pinning it in place. And here I end up getting mostly what I want. It's a little too far away. You can see I have a, quite a bit of slack between the wall and the piston, so I just make that there. And then finally I put in the curved section as well. This is really similar to what I did before, to have an angle that I have to keep rotating each block once I put them on. And once I get that here, I give it a quick test, and you can see the engine is always pretty close close to that wall, but it's never touching it, which is exactly what I want. So I end up flipping it over, and then I delete everything that I accidentally copied over, and flip it over to the other side as well. And finally here, I have a full test, I actually have a wheel on top driving this thing, and you can see, the movement is pretty good, but I don't trust it with a power source yet, because it will bind up, and it's just ridiculously close, especially in this area here. You actually see it ends up hitting here. So I use some better bracing pieces to hold it all together. After I do that, I end up adding some legs to this, and what I'm going to do is put on some wheels. Now, I wasn't too sure if it was going to have enough power to really drive a car, but I thought it'd be fun if it could. So I put those in place there, and I'm looking for a power source, and I just didn't know what I wanted, but the water can just seem to be the best thing available. And the reason for that is that it isn't too strong, pretty easy to use, and I can put it right where I want it in this one spot so that it always pushes against the sidewall of the engine. So here finally if I brace it, you can see if I give it a quick test, it actually is pushing the engine a little bit. Now it's not great, you can see it slows down, speeds up, and it actually hits the wall sometimes too. And it was here I realized I really needed to fix the problem of it hitting into the sides. So what I did is deleted all the spots that were sort of protruding out a little bit, and also changed up the way I have the points of the triangles so that they're less, well, pointy, and they can slide past things a little bit easier. So once I did that here, you can see I gave it another test, I turned on the water, and it seemed to be good, so I left it running for quite a while, I turned up the speed for you guys, because I figured you didn't want to sit here through that, and for the most part it actually seems fine, like I see no real problems with this at all. So I deleted the two wheels on the outside since I realized I really didn't need them, and instead what I did is just extended out the wheels from the middle, I used a few more bracing pieces to hold everything together, and then finally I'm adding in a second water cannon. Now this is where I deviate from a normal Wankel engine design a little bit, because technically there's only one spot in the Winkle engine where power is being delivered, and the other two spots, one is exhausting and the other is intaking. So it's not exactly perfect, but since I'm not really doing any exhausting or intaking, I could just use the other side as another pushing point as well. And the advantage of this as well is that while one water cannon's at its weakest point, the other one's at its strongest, so they can sort of help each other out, and for the most part, this should really help to get me anywhere. So I added in two gears to the outside of one of the wheels, and then finally what I did is made a bit of a gear train going all the way up, and what I want to do is try moving the rotation of the engine all the way to the wheel. So firstly what I did is just added a wooden block, and I wanted to make sure that it actually was the output of the engine, and you can see here, it rotates as the engine rotates, so it is in fact the output of the engine. And now what I'm doing is adding in this plus shape, and I'm going to use a 4 bar linkage. Now for this it just carries the rotation from one point to another point, and I turned it on, but I realized nothing was really happening. It seemed like something was binding up, and I realized the culprit was actually one of the blocks I put in was touching a swivel joint and stopping it from swiveling. So I changed my 4-bar linkage to a 3-bar linkage, which is actually perfectly fine. It can run on just 3. And once I turn that on, you can see here, it is actually rotating the top gear. Now, it's not locked down to anything yet, and I'm doing that here. And once I do this, it still isn't going to rotate the wheel because I haven't locked the last gear to the wheel yet. But you can see the whole gear train is working, and all I have left to do is add one bracing piece from the outside wheel to the gear. And now, once I have that in place, it was a bit of a rough start, but finally here, 
it just randomly started working, then got it and decided to reset it or something, and it just started to remove. Now, it was very slow, but it was rotating on its own. And here I turn up speed for you guys, because it's kind of ridiculous. But after quite a few tests, it actually seemed to be pretty continuous, and for the most part, it actually seemed to be working. So guys, thanks for watching. This video technically took two months to work on, but in reality, it definitely wasn't quite that long. Basically, I ended up giving up a while ago and then coming back to it, but I'm glad I did, because I ended up getting it to work, and all I needed to do was look at the linkages a little bit and figure out what was happening there. So if you have any other weird engine designs that I can make, post them in the comments down below. If you want to join my Discord server, you can do that. At some point, I'm going to be having a siege competition. Not exactly sure when. Probably this month. Maybe not, though. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise, until next time.